Hello and good day everyone. Did you guys ever feel amazed with the beautiful, brightful and colorful LED light? I am sure you guys felt amazed and can't wait to strike a pose for your social media feeds. But have you guys ever wondered how LED can be so colorful? So today I can't wait to share about the life cycle of LED lights. Stay tuned. In this video, there will be an introduction where I will share with you the history of LED. Then, the life cycle of LED which consists of five stages, followed by the effect of LED towards the environment, and lastly, the conclusion. Let's start with the introduction. Before we proceed, did you guys know what is LED lights are? LED is an acronym for Light Emitting Diodes. Light Emitting Diode is an electric component that emits light when connected to direct current. It works on electroluminescent principle and can emit light in the visible spectrum as well as in infrared and ultraviolet. LED have characteristically low energy consumption, small size, longer lifetime, and faster switching than incandescence lamps and because of that, they have a wide palette of applicability. Now we moving on to the history of LED light. In 1907, British experimenter in Marconi Labs, Henry Joseph Round noticed for the first time that when a potential of 10 volts is applied to carborundum or silicon carbide crystal, it emits yellowish light. However, first to investigate it and to propose a working theory was Oleg Vladimirovich Losev from Russia. In 1927, Oleg published a paper, Luminous Carborundum Detector and Detection Effect and Oscillations with Crystals. For decades no progress was made for different reasons. Ruben Bronstein that worked at Radio Corporation of America, reported in 1955 that some simple diodes emit infrared light when connected to a current. In 1961, Gary Pittman and Bob Biard from Texas Instruments found that that gallium arsenide diode emits infrared light every time it is connected to current. The same year they received patent for infrared LED. In 1962, Nick Holoniak Jr., employed in General Electric, developed first light-emitting diode that emitted light in the visible part of the frequency range. It was a red LED. In 1972, M. George Crawford, who was a graduate student of Holoniak, invented the first yellow LED in a brighter red LED. Thomas P. Pearsall developed high-brightness light-emitting diode in 1976, for use with fiber optics and telecommunications. Shuji Nakamura of Michia Corporation made first blue LED in 1979 but it was too expensive for commercial use until 1994. Light-emitting diodes can now be made in one or in more colors. At first light-emitting diodes were very expensive, some US$200 per piece. Because of that, they were used as indicators only in highly professional laboratory equipment. Fairchild Semiconductors succeeded in 1970s to reduce cost of individual LED to 5 cents by using planar process in production of semiconductor chips for light-emitting diodes. By using innovative methods of packaging and a planar process of chip production, Fairchild made LED into a commercial product with variety of uses. Now we will talk about the life cycle of LED. There are five life cycle stages, which include inputs, raw materials, manufacturing, transportation to point of sale, use of the product, and end-of-life disposal, recycling. Many products are made up of multiple components, and lamps are no exception. This first stage of the life cycle accounts for the emissions and resource usage associated with the production and transport of the various raw materials and intermediate products that are inputs to the final product. The manufacturing phase takes all of the raw materials, as delivered to the point of production, and accounts for the energies used and emissions associated with fabricating the lamp. In this analysis all of the major component parts are depicted in the figure to highlight these component parts. The distribution phase covers the transportation of the product from its point of manufacture to its point of installation and use. There might be a tendency when thinking about an LCA to believe that a detailed transport model will be required. However, for many products, transport and distribution form a small part of the overall environmental footprint. 
Impacts from distribution tend to be much more significant if the product needs to be refrigerated during the distribution stage of the process, which isn't the case for lighting products. The use consumption phase of a product is usually straightforward to describe, though it is important that a consistent basis is chosen to enable fair comparisons between different products. The final stage of a life cycle is the end of life stage which reflects what happens to the lighting products when they have stopped working and are no longer required. The end of life phase takes into account any other integral parts of a product's life cycle, most notably the box and packaging. There is also the question of whether to give a process credit for any end of life recycling which could, for example, reduce reliance on raw materials. However, if a particular process assumes a reduced impact due to the incorporation of recycled materials, this might constitute double counting. Now we will talk about the effect of LED on the environment. One of the main reasons why LED light bulbs are considered so eco-friendly is the fact that they are designed to last much longer than conventional light bulbs. LED light bulbs can last up to 20 times longer than standard forms of lighting such as incandescent bulbs or halogen bulbs, which has a very positive effect on the environment. The fact that LED lasts longer means that fewer bulbs need to be produced, and conversely they do not need to be replaced as often. Remember, less is more when it comes to helping the environment, so the fact that fewer lights are needed means that fewer resources will be required for manufacturing, packaging and transportation. Standard LED bulbs can be up to 80% more energy efficient than conventional bulbs, and waste far less energy than other styles of lighting. Fluorescent lights, for example, convert around 95% of the energy they produce into heat and only 5% into light. LED lights, however, convert 95% of their energy into light with only 5% being wasted as heat. This means that LED require less power than regular forms of lighting, so obviously the less energy they require, the more positive the effect on the environment. As a homeowner or business owner, this is also an important characteristic, because the less energy required to produce lighting, the lower your monthly energy bills will be. So when you choose LED lighting for your home or business, not only can you help to save the planet you live on, you can also save money in the process. Some of the LED lights contain no hazardous materials so they are obviously much safer for the environment and they do not require specialist disposal. This means there is no need to arrange for a vehicle to drive to the premises to collect and then dispose of them, so fewer emissions on the road are also produced. D Despite the good impacts, there are also the negative impact. Some of LED are also very harmful to the environment, as they contain toxic chemicals and elements, including mercury. This means that, when disposed of in landfill sites, these toxic elements can leach out and contaminate the environment. They therefore need to be disposed of in a particular way, meaning that they need to be collected by specialist waste carriers. Now we have come to the conclusion. LED continue to improve and be used in new applications. With this new use for applications, there has been a major shift towards LED as a way to light everything from holiday lights to traffic signals. What I can say is that LED are much more environmentally friendly compared to traditional lamps. Let's start today to protect our beloved environment. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And if you want to know more about the life cycle of any kind of products, don't forget to click the subscribe button down there. See you soon, bye.